Hi, it's Kirby Summers. Uh, today is November 4th. This is a sort of like giving you what's happening today on the Sean Combs case because things are getting a bit wild and a bit heated up, okay? Um, I want to thank those of you who are new to my channel, those of you who have stepped up and become a member to, of my Patreon and a member of my Substack. I really appreciate that. I've also noticed an uptick in my backup Twitter account, now X, because Elon Musk made my account disappear, clearly. Uh, so I'm just going to get straight into it. And if you'd be kind enough to give this a like, and if you haven't subscribed, please do so, because this is where I'm going to be uploading information on the Sean Combs case. And as you all know, I'm still working on Epstein, Wexner, you know, Jarecki, and a lot of other stuff. To begin with, today is Sean Combs' birthday, November the 4th. He is, as you know, at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in the same jail where Glenn Maxwell was. And he is spending his birthday where I believe he belongs. So he has a friend uh, by the, well, he had a friend by the name of Courtney Burgess. And some of you may have heard of him uh, because he has been making the rounds. Uh, Burgess has known Sean Diddy Combs for, he claims, 35 years. That's a long time. Uh, he said that in the beginning, he saw him as somebody who was ambitious. And then that he changed from being um, ambitious to then becoming uh, somebody who would do anything until finally he's turned into Lucifer. He says that um, he is not um, going to call him Diddy or Puffy or any of his names. That What he calls him is Lucifer. Um, so Apparently, Courtney Burgess says he was given 11 flash drives containing at least eight Sean Diddy Combs tapes involving eight celebrities. According to Burgess, at least two, possibly three, of these celebrities were underage and victimized. He went on to say that um, the... Adults that were there, and before I end this short podcast today, I'm going to name some of the people, were in fact um, given something to drink that was laced with something against their consent, right? So they were, they were given, you know, uh, something to change their mood, I'm going to say on this platform without their consent and knowledge and victimized. And then that afterward, they were as aid. That is what he has said. So apparently um, Combs is getting very nervous. Uh, his attorneys turned around and today, I believe it was today or last night, um, in, I think it was the Rolling St Rolling Stone magazine. So I'm just going to quickly read this uh, to you. Sean Diddy Combs' attorneys have ramped up their efforts to have a federal judge issue an immediate widespread gag order in the bad boy moguls as trafficking and racket racketeering case after an alleged grand jury witness claimed to possess incriminating videos of Combs. Combs attorneys Mark Agnifilo and Tenny Garagos submitted a motion to the United States District Judge on Sunday night urging the court to immediately restrain extrajudicial statements by potential witnesses and their counsel. The 55-year-old defense team, so they're talking about Combs, uh, first asked for a gag order in late October, pointing to at least a dozen new civil lawsuits filed against Combs after his September arrest. 
His lawyers claimed that a lack of restrictions would substantially interfere with his right to a fair trial, which is scheduled for May 25th. I would just want to interject here and say that even though the trial is set for May 2025, that does not mean that's when it's going to happen. It may happen a year later. It may happen a year and a half later. But he's not, he probably is going to try. I'm just giving you some more info for bail. If you remember when Galen was going through this, she uh, attempted to get bail six times. He will attempt to get bail again. Uh, he will be denied. I mean, they've turned down, I think the amount, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't he offer 50 million? And they said, no, uh, that's not going to work out. Um, in any event, that date is going to change. So he did plead. I'm going to go on with the article. He Combs pleaded not guilty to the three charges against him. Prosecutors with the Southern District of New York opposed Combs' motion, claiming not only was the request broad and overreaching, but would potentially silence accusers who were not part of the criminal case. Attorney Douglas Wigdor, who was representing, representing Cassandra Cassie Ventura and a Jane Doe client, also submitted a letter to the court protesting the request, saying it would inappropriately silence victims who are proactively seeking justice through the civil justice system. While the court hasn't made a ruling, Combs' team re-upped their request. After Florida-based attorney Ariel Mitchell and her client, here it goes, Courtney Burgess went on a press tour last week. They claimed that Burgess possessed videos of Combs alleged, allegedly essaying celebrities, including minors, and was testifying in front of a grand jury. SDNY prosecutors previously noted their investigation was ongoing and that a superseding indictment was very much a possibility. Combs' attorneys deny the existence of such videos and are requesting for the gag order to be granted and implemented immediately. These stories, and this is a quote in the article, these stories have spread rapidly through the media and created the impression that such videos exist, which is false and that the government is actually crediting his sensational claims, which is profoundly prejudicial, Agnifilo and Garagos wrote. By treating these ridiculous claims as anything but a pathetic extortion scheme, the government is fueling the fire of online conspiracy theories and making it impossible for Mr. Combs to have a fair trial. Well, that's the end of that article, and it's really interesting because the the tapes were actually handed over. This is not the first time that uh, Burgess has talked about these taped, in plural tapes. He is going to be appearing and testifying against Combs. He has said in interviews that you know Combs did not know he was taping what was happening with these celebrities. Um, and um, it's really interesting that they want a gag order on something that appears to be real. I mean, this guy is, if you've seen him on t like podcasts and now he's even on mainstream, uh, he seems like he's telling the truth. He seems very sincere. Uh, I believe him. Uh, okay, so according to him, um, Kevin Hart, Snoop Dogg, Mary J. Blige, and J. Lo have also been victimized by, uh, allegedly, by Combs and were among the eight celebrities that he's talked about that he claims to have tapes that he submitted already. And he will be appearing as a witness. So they're getting very nervous that this guy will continue to talk. Now, if if that's the case, why get nervous? If if Combs is telling the truth, which clearly we all don't believe that's happening, but clearly Burgess is telling the truth. Now, I do remember uh, during the other 
case involving Lexner's friend and Galen's friend, if you know what I mean, um, some of the victims would talk to me, uh, you know, sort of about what was happening. And I know that um, uh, David Boyce, who was the attorney for no most notably for Virginia and a couple of the others, and then we have J. Stanley Pottinger, and we have Bradley Edwards, who pretty much handed them over. I still, it's hard for me to believe he just handed Virginia over on a silver platter to what I'm going to call a demon, a uh, demon David boys. Um, at that time, I do remember the girls complaining that they were being told that there was a gag order on them, that they couldn't say a lot on social media. So attorneys are concerned when there's going to be a trial, especially one of this magnitude. This is the first time a case like this has, and with the kinds of details that we're hearing about, because although the Epstein case was talked about publicly, we've not heard a case like the one we're hearing about now with the kinds of details that, to be frank with you, have been happening for many, many, many decades. But typically, mainstream never talks about it. It never gets exposed in a court of law. And I want you to note that in the current case against Combs, he is not being charged with what's being exposed in the lawsuits that are coming up. It would not surprise me if the Combs attorneys turn around and do what David Boyce did, which is to create a, a victim's compensation fund, but you only get money if you then sign off your rights and you do not sue and you do not go after and you do not talk. So although Combs has been also alleging that he has no money, that, you know, he he he's transferred his money elsewhere, that if they can sue him and he's not he has nothing to give back, I think he's going to change his tune because he can't keep people like Burgess quiet. And Burgess is probably not the only one who was around and decided, you know, was like, hey, this is really not a, a nice thing to do and kind of turned on Sean Combs. I think a lot of people are turning on Sean Combs. Well, I'm very curious to hear what you guys have to say. So do me a favor, give this a like, and I look forward to reading your comments. All right, guys, have a good day. Bye.